Okay, now in this section, we are going uh, in section 11.3. Um, we're going to go over um, the inferences of two means when you have independent samples. Okay, so um, in the last section we dealt with dependent samples with, with two means. Um, and you'll notice that 11.3 with independent samples is very, very similar. Very similar. Um, and actually I would go as far to say as um, it's it's um it's like comparing uh like a proportion to a a, a mean for hypothesis test from chapter 10 um and in chapter 11 uh, again comparing um uh, independent samples um mean to independent samples proportions um so anyways you'll you'll notice that this is almost identical um so and um uh, anyways, um, gosh, I'm spacing it. We we end up having uh, having um, independent samples. to find an example. I think I'm going to go directly into an example. Uh, just because I, I said uh, it's it's almost identical to uh, independent propo uh, proportions, and I went kind of in-depth on that. I don't want to go in-depth on this and go directly into a sample, just so you can see the differences. So... All right... There we go. Let's do that one. Number 15 on section 11.3. So number 15, it talks about bacteria in hospital carpeting. So we have carpeted rooms and uncarpeted rooms. Um, and as you can see, we have two different variables here that we're talking about, carpeted and uncarpeted rooms, and, and how much bacteria is, is uh, on each. And what we're doing is we're going to be doing a uh, um, um, we're going to be comparing these two different variables, and as we were doing uh, throughout all the other um, other things in chapter eleven, um, the concepts when we want to compare two different variables, we want to find the difference. So. Um, so what we would be uh, yeah, what we would be doing um, going in directly to the checks I want to go in order this time make sure we're gonna go into the checks and notice that uh, the checks that they mention here the samples are obtained using simple random sampling through, through a randomized experiment so reading into the problem I'm just gonna I'm not even sure if, oh, doesn't say how these rooms were were picked but we're going to assume random and when you do your project um, you're going to be doing your own sampling, so obviously you'll know how random your sampling is. So it's not mentioned in just this wording here of how they gather their sampling, so let's just assume they're, it's random. Um, the samples are independent. Since we're doing independent samples in section 11.3 of means, um, of two means, they have to be independent of each other. And as you can see, um, like in, in the previous section, we were dealing with the cities, the cities is what made them dependent of each other. And as you can see, um, we're just choosing rooms that are carpeted and rooms that are uncarpeted. There's no dependence there. There's no match pairs between uh, one, one of the values from the carpeted rooms and one of the values from the un uncarpeted rooms. There's no dependence there. <clears throat> There's no natural pairing that goes on. There's no match pairs. 
Um, they're just picking eight rooms that are carpeted and eight rooms that are uncarpeted. Okay. So there's no link of dependence. So obviously, I'm going to emphasize obviously, and hopefully you can see that they're independent. Okay. Um, the populations in which the samples are drawn are normally distributed, or um, or the samples are large, and uh, which we need n1 be greater than or equal to 30, or n2 be, uh, and n2 be greater, greater than or equal to 30. And as you can see, there's only eight rooms um, that are carpeted and eight rooms that are uncarpeted. So n1 equals 8, n2 equals 8. Not large enough. But it says in here, uh, a normal probability plot and, and box plot indicate that the data are approximately normally distributed with no outliers. Okay? So there we go. It mentioned normal stated in problem. There we go. We got normal. Normality. Um, and obviously, um, no more than 5% of the population size the sample it can be. So eight rooms, obviously, out of all the hospitals, out of everywhere, um, there's way more than 20 times eight, um, obviously. There's millions, I guess. Uh, so obviously, that that's checked so uh, um, and that's the check of for um, so n1 is uh, less than or equal to 0 0.05 of population one size and n2 is less than or equal to 0 0.05 of n2 that is obvious since there's eight and then times 20, uh, that's obviously, um, there's obviously more than 160 uncarpeted rooms at hospitals and 160 carpeted rooms in all the hospitals. So not to worry about that. So uh, so now let's go ahead and start our, um, our step one. Step one. Step one is the null and alternative hypothesis. We should get used to this, that being step one. And do we know if it's a left, right, or two-tail test? Um, researchers wanted to determine if carpeted rooms contain more bacteria than uncarpeted rooms. Um, so, yeah. Obviously, this is um, a right-tail test, but you have to be really careful about this. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. And for now, I'm just going to write mu and not write the subscripts. But that's always equal. And then mu. We're doing two different pop. Well, I don't. I want to do greater than uh, mu. And now I'm going to use subscripts other than one and two. I would suggest you do this also if you you know write out all your work. We have carpeted rooms and uncarpeted rooms. I'm going to use the subscripts C and U. Carpeted, uncarpeted, C and U. So it's stating that wanted to determine if the carpeted rooms contain more bacteria. So carpeted more than uncarpeted. Carpeted more than uncarpeted. So just to keep it straight, one and two might get a little confusing. One and two might get a little confusing, um, and you'll forget which variable's which. So I suggest using like letters to keep track of what each variable represents. All right, so comparing this variable to this variable, are they equal, or is one greater than the other? Okay. Um, step two, level of significance. Step two, we see that um, we have alpha equals 0 0.05, mentioned in the problem. Step three, and guess what? Um, this would be the first thing you can figure out on your 
calculator. There's one for this. So just to explain this really quickly, um, it would, well, just on your calc, calculator, you would do um, two, representing two variables, um, two Z test. Uh, I'll look. I forgot what it's called. I might be right. Let me check. Stat test two. Oh, two sample t test. Two sample t test. There's two samples that you're taking. It's t because your test statistic will actually figure out is a is a t distribution, and it's the test that are doing a hypothesis test. And t naught is equal to that bad, nasty equation that we see over here. Um, oh, and just to let you know, mu uh, mu sub c equals mu sub u is the same thing as saying mu sub 1, or mu sub c minus mu sub u equal, uh, equals 0. The same thing as saying that. Similar to proportion, like I said, it's very similar to proportion. We can think of it like that. So um, when it mentions that mu 1, uh, it has x bar minus uh, the other x bar, and then minus mu 1 minus mu 2, uh, or mu c minus mu u, and as you can see, that's zero. So all you need is x bar c minus x bar u. Um, and just to kind of get an idea, comparing this to, to the dependent uh, with two means, um, we were taking match pairs and subtracting each pair to get the difference, and then we had one variable. In this case, we want to find the sample mean from each individual variable. We would want to find the sample mean of the carpeted and the sample mean of the uncarpeted rooms, okay, and the level of uh, bacteria. So we would go ahead and calculate that. I'm going to go ahead and do it for the heck of it. Um, clear. So we have 11.8 plus 8.2. Eighty-nine point six divide eight, eleven point two. So our x bar one. I'll just write them all up here. As we, um, x bar one is equal to eleven point two. Um, I did that by hand, but as you can see, I just added up all the carpeted, uh, the carpeted rooms, and um, so. Anyways, uh, I also need to find the sample standard deviation of the car. Uh, actually, this is subscript C. So that's x bar C, S sub C. Um, I, I would need to uh, find the sample standard deviation of those eight carpeted rooms. And as you can, as you know, you can do um, one one var stats of this. So we would want to make our lists L one. Okay. 
Okay, so I put all my values into list one, and um, I am going to calculate the one bar stats. Three point two seven. The sample standard deviation. And um, notice that I did not use sigma, that because this is not a population. I use s because it's a sample. The calculator doesn't know if it's a population or sample. You have to know which variable to choose. So I did not use sigma. I use s. So um, similarly, um, we can uh, do the same thing for x bar uncarpeted. So I'll go ahead and do that. So I got 11.575, and I got um, sample standard deviation of u to equal um, 3.27. Again, wow, I got the same sample standard deviation. Interesting. OK. Oh, I just noticed. Um, let me check something really quick. I, I, I just did L1 again. So let me check. Did I enter anything wrong? 8 .2, 7.1, 13, 10.8, 10.1, 14.6, and 14. Okay, I was wrong. Uh, so this was actually 2.68. 2.68, and these are also wrong. Ah. 9.7. the sample mean for uncarpeted and 3.21 okay <clears throat> we're gonna plug this into the equation and um, all right so t naught is equal to <clears throat> x bar c Um, 11.2 minus 9.79 over the square root of S1 squared divided by N1 plus S2 squared over N2. And I don't know why, it, uh, what's wrong with me? Uh, we want 2.68 here. Ah, getting tired or something. 2.68 squared over N1. You follow that equation, but anyways, N1 being 8 plus 3.21 squared divided by 8. So that divided by that and I put the values into L1 and L2 I'm gonna go to stat and use 
this thing right here to figure out what it's equal to. It will get the same value. And there is actually one Frequency one, frequency two, just put ones. Um, and it is a right tail test. Okay. And um, and for the answer of pooled or not, um, you'll want to d use um, Say no. no, we're not doing a pool. So you end up getting a p or a t value of zero point nine five five eight. Okay, and a p value of and it's written there. It's a point one seven eight. Anyways, but we're just looking at the the test statistic which is that t equals, and um, yeah, just what I thought. Okay, so um, the, yeah, anyways, we are actually We are using the pool. So yes to pool. Sorry. We do want to use pool. So make sure you used pooled for the option. Use pooled. Um, that will make a difference. And um, it's because of the degrees of freedom. Um, and you'll notice that the degrees of freedom for um, the t distribution dimension uh, because we want to know degrees of freedom because we're doing t for the critical value. So here's the test statistic, and I'm just going to mention critical value. So it is based off of uh, right tail test, alpha equals 0 0.05. So we're going to look up t 0 0.05 at degrees of freedom of the min of each of the sample sizes. Um, n minus 1, um, so we have 8 and 8. So they didn't have to be the same. We could have had like eight and ten. You use the minimum sample size, so we would use eight. Um, command it's eight here, anyways. So that would be seven. Um, so if we had thirty and twenty, we would use twenty, and we had degrees of freedom of nineteen. Use the minimum of, of each of the samples. So in this case, it's seven. Um, and the critical value based off this, we would look at the t table like we did before. And we look up degrees of freedom 7 and look up a subscript of 0 0.05. So that would be 1.895. So there we go. Comparing the test statistic to the critical value, this is in um, 1.895. So T sub alpha is equal to 1.895. Just copying it over here really quick. And T sub naught is equal to 0 0.9558. Okay. Getting those. Normal comparison. Where is that test statistic compared to the critical value? And the critical value is here at 1.8. 895 the critical value and the test statistic is towards the middle right here I'll just put T naught so that is in the fail to reject H naught region and there we go step five you state the conclusion like we always do before go through the flow chart as we can see does this contain the condition of equality no we're doing a right tail test so they said one's greater than the other so no for the, uh, for the first step of the conclusion of the flow chart. So we say no, so we go down. And um, did we reject the null hypothesis? No, we failed to reject.
So it'd be no, no. So you'd be on the option for it. And you'd state your conclusion. And you paste your claim. And so it'd be dot, dot, dot. And looking at the specific example, the claim is the carpeted rooms contained more bacteria than the uncarpeted rooms with alpha equals 0 0.05 level of significance. So you, um, so you would state your conclusion at the dot 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 um, what I just mentioned. So anyways, let me know if you have any questions. Again, if you are having difficulty with this flow chart, a lot of you have not seen this before and one person's already called me about this and I walked them through it and they understand how to use the flow chart now. So please, if you do not understand the flow chart, please ask me um, and we can go over it. It's not too bad. Um, anyways, uh, let me see if there's any other things. Um, oh, similar, similarly to proportion, we could, um, we, we have a confidence interval. I just did a test statistic. So the confidence interval based off of this, it's pretty straightforward. Um, the confidence interval of what mu1 minus mu2 is, because that's what we're doing. Um, pop, the population mean minus population mean of both the populations. Um, that's what we're what we're doing here. Can be uh, with a certain level of significance or um, confidence level. It'd be equal to x bar one minus x um, bar two plus or minus uh, t alpha over two times the square root, the standard error, S1 squared. Same equation that we used for the test statistic, literally the same exact things we use. You would just solve for um, mu1 minus mu2. Okay, and the only other thing, uh, again, this is the margin of error E. We can figure out the sample size needed and similarly to proportion, we would go n equals n1 equals n2. So you're assuming n is equal to n1 and n2. So setting these equal to each other, you would have a common denominator similar to proportion. And we can solve the, for the needed uh, sample size um, to get a specific margin of error. Similar to proportion, we would obtain the... Um, let's see if I have it here. I'm actually not seeing it in the book. They're not mentioning it. That's weird because there is an equation. Um, trying to think of why they wouldn't. Well, if you see a problem where they want you to find the sample size, um, let me know and we can go over it. I don't think I not seeing it in the book here, um, and I have a feeling that maybe they don't cover it. Um, hmm. But if they did, we would solve for n. Hmm, why wouldn't they do that? Uh, I have a feeling they're not going to do it. They're not going to ask you a question about that. The needed, uh, well, figure out the needed sample size to get a certain margin of error within a certain value. Um, anyways, that's about it. Um, I'm just seeing if there's any other little things we need to talk about. Um, oh, well, I, I could mention this. Uh, to find a confidence interval, you can use on your calculator two um, sample T interval. Shouldn't surprise you. 
and you'll get it. Um, doo -doo -doo, what other little things? Uh, maybe I shouldn't just wing these. But, mm. Two simp at the interval. Yep. Two simp. Two prime data. Yeah, that's about it. Hmm. Um, just to let you know, I'm not honestly sure if doing it by the calculator No, I'm pretty sure that'll work. Okay, never mind. I think we got it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or if you run into any problems, and we'll try to troubleshoot it, but everything should be working out um, if you follow each of these steps. Okay, bye.